Okay, so I'm going to go back and finish up example two. So given the three functions, f, g, and h, we're going to evaluate these functions for the given x value. Um, I have four different examples here I want to look at. First, just kind of looking at a basic one, f of negative two. So whichever your function f is, which is right here on the first one, you got x squared minus 3x. So we're going to replace, wherever there's an x, you're going to replace it with negative 2. And then you're just going to evaluate this. So this would be 4 plus 6, which is 10. And so when you look at this, f of negative 2 is equal to 10. And when you guys write this, you need to write it this way. It's telling you when your independent value is negative 2, your dependent is 10. Okay? Um, on the second one, g of a plus 4. So it doesn't have to just be a number. But you're still going to take this entire expression and you're going to plug it in for every x value for that function g. And so instead of being 2 times x, now it's 2 times the quantity. You're just replacing the x with a plus 4 minus 1. And then you distribute 2a plus 8 minus 1, which is 2a plus 7. So g of a plus 4 is equal to 2a plus 7. And once again, I want to see that whole part there um, as your final answer. And then on C, we have h of negative 4. So on this one, you have a piecewise function, for example, um, h of x. So you can only plug in the negative 4 where the domain allows you. So this top part, we want numbers that are less than or equal to negative 1. And then the bottom one, we only want values that are greater than negative 1. So you have to plug it into the correct one which in this case would be the top one because it is less than negative 1. So we would say the absolute value of 3 times negative 4 plus 1, which is the absolute value of negative 12 plus 1. And so the absolute value of negative 11 is 11. And so that's how you evaluate different functions given different information. Now the last one I'm going to do with this is called the difference quotient. So you're taking the difference um, of f of x plus h minus f of x, and you're dividing that by h. This is something that we're going to use later on in the course, um, really when we start getting into some, some calculus stuff. So I'm going to go to the next page, give me some room here, and we're going to evaluate this for function f of x. So x plus h, this first part, wherever there's an x, plus, um, wherever there's an x you're going to replace it with x plus h. So this x plus h is going to replace both of those x values, and that's going to represent that first part there. So what do we get? So we have f of x plus h, so wherever there's an x, we're going to write x plus h. So x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h. Once again, wherever there's an x, that represents the x plus h. So this whole first part that I've written down this is the f of x plus h. So now we're going to do the next part, minus f of x. Well, that whole thing represents f of x. So minus, I'm going to put it in brackets just so you can see what each part represents, minus x squared minus 3x. So this is minus f of x. And then all of this is divided by h. So once you get it plugged in, it's just really a matter of simplifying everything down to uh, the simplest form. All right, so here we go. So we're going to square x plus h squared. Now, x plus h squared is x plus h times x plus h. So what's x plus h times x plus h? This would be x squared. And then it's going to be plus xh plus xh, so there's two of them, so plus 2xh, and then plus h squared. And then we have to distribute the negative 3, so that's negative 3x minus 3h, and then you have to distribute the negative on the minus f of x part, so that's minus x squared plus 3x, all still over h. And then we simplify. Now you'll notice some things cancel out, like the negative 3x and the positive 3x. The x squared and the negative x squared cancel. So you're left with 2xh plus h squared minus 3h 
over h. So it looks like you might be done simplifying, but not quite yet, because there's an h in all the top terms. So you're going to factor out, use the distributive property, that h, and you're left with 2x plus h minus 3 divided by h. So what you then see is the h is now cancel, and so your final answer is 2x plus h minus 3. All right, so f of x plus h minus f of x all over h for this example is equal to 2x plus h minus 3. And there's an example of what's called the difference quotient and definitely something uh, we'll, we'll have to work on. The last example we're going to look at is example 3 where we're going to be talking about identifying the domain of each function in interval notation. Now we'll talk about the range also but our focus is going to be on the domain for this particular part. So the first one is f of x equals the square root of x minus 3. Square root function. We start with the domain as all real numbers. And then you ask yourself, is there any restrictions? Can you take the square root of every single number? And we know the answer to that is no when we're talking about real numbers. So what is it? Well, this number underneath the square root, what's the smallest value you can take the square root of? And the answer is zero. So I want that value of x to give me zero underneath there. So how do we do that? Well, you can just think about it, or you can say x minus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0. And then when you solve that, what you come up with is values that must be greater than or equal to 3. So you can plug in any number greater than or equal to 3, and that will give you a real um, output. Okay. If you go less than 3, for example, 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is a complex number. So in interval notation, we would write this as a bracket because we're including the 3. So 3 is part of the domain, and then it goes to infinity. Okay, So the domain is all values of x greater than or equal to 3. b, h of m equals the fourth root of 9 minus 6m. So similar to the first one here, that was the square root. This one is the fourth root. So on the fourth root, what do we do? Well, we still have the same thing. This value underneath here must be greater than or equal to 0. So you'll set it up. 9 minus 6m greater than or equal to 0. And you'll solve for m. And you get m. Now you are um, dividing by negative, so you have to change the inequality sign. So divided by negative 6 um, would give you 9, 6, and we can reduce that to 3 halves. So we want all values that are less than or equal to three halves. Interval notation though, it's going to go from negative infinity, you always write the smallest number first, negative infinity, all the way to three halves, and three halves is included, so we do use the bracket on that one. Okay, So anything less than three halves will work. Anything greater than three halves, for example two, um, if you plug it in, you'll see you'll get a negative, and you don't take, you can't take the fourth root of a negative, just like you can't take the square root. Um, all right, C. Now C, you have g of t equals negative t squared minus 10t plus 3. All right, so what is this? Well, this is a quadratic. You start with all real numbers. Are there any restrictions on what you can do with this? No, you can square any number you want. So your domain... For this quadratic, or all quadratics, is negative infinity to infinity, which means all real numbers. All right. Um, part D, we have 16 minus x squared, and then the square root of that. Now, this is one where if we tried to solve and say 16 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0, we could do it, but it gets into some, some new stuff that we haven't quite covered yet. Um, so this one is, let's go ahead and graph this on the calculator. So you can see I took two pictures from the graphing calculator. Um, and we're going to talk about this in class. These are actually exactly the same, um, same equation. So we're going to talk about why these look, um, why they look so different. Um, one actually looks like a circle, and one looks more like an oval. So we'll talk about that. 
Um, but what is it? Look, look at where it goes. And, and you know, this one, you can count one, two, three, four. It looks like from negative four to four. That would be your domain uh, for this one. So if you think about it, if you plug in four, you'll get 16 minus 16, which is zero. And then if you plug in anything less than four and in between negative four, because you're squaring it, the negative doesn't necessarily matter in this case, you'll still get a value. But if you go on the outside of it, like five, then you're going to start getting the square root of negative numbers. So you guys can use your graphing calculators to help you identify some of these domains. So negative four to four. E, we have h of x equals x over x squared minus x minus 12. So with a, what's called a rational function here, what's your domain? Well, your domain, once again, we, if we stick with all real numbers, what are the restrictions? What can we not do when we're dealing with division? We can't divide by zero. So x squared minus x minus 12 cannot equal zero. So what values of x make this zero? Well, you have x squared minus x minus 12 equals zero. We want to find out what values of x make it zero. So you have to be able to solve a quadratic. One way of solving a quadratic, if possible, is to factor. And then set your factors equal to zero. and then solving for those. So it looks like we get x equals 4 and x equals negative 3 as values that do not work. So x cannot equal negative 3 and x cannot equal 4. But we want to write it in interval notation. So how do we say that? The domain, um, think of a number line. You're starting from negative infinity. You're going to go all the way to negative 3. Now does negative 3 part of the domain? No, it gives you a zero in the denominator. So we'll use a parenthesis, not a bracket. And then we'll do a union. So we have all values less than negative 3. But then also in between negative 3 and 4, because 4 doesn't work. And then we have to do one more union, and we'll go from 4 all the way to infinity. So what you're really thinking about is you have this number line, negative 3, and 4, and those are the only two values that don't work. And so that's why your interval notation looks a little bit more spread out there. All right, and then the last one, the volume of a sphere. Volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r squared. What's your independent variable? It's the r value. What are your restrictions? Can you have radius of a sphere, um, any number? No, you can't have negatives, and you can't have zero, so... Your domain for this volume of a sphere would be all values that are greater than zero. And once again, on this one, you don't have the bracket at zero because zero is not part of um, the domain because you can't have a radius of zero, then the volume doesn't exist anyways. So there are a couple of examples of domain. Uh, hopefully that at least gives you a good start. There's other functions we haven't talked about, but um, just kind of go through the same process with, with each of those.